Hi, and welcome to the Interprofessional In-Service Delivery of Clinical Care, Project 4. Our topic today is on type 2 diabetes mellitus of the adult. My name is Lisa Ryan. I'm a registered nurse, and I have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. The objectives of our discussion today and our goals include the presentation is to provide the interprofessional care team with a greater understanding of type 2 diabetes diabetes in order to provide a more comprehensive care for these patients. Some of our SMART goals would include increasing your knowledge today of type 2 diabetes by at least one fact and improve care of the type 2 diabetic through increased knowledge, produce better patient outcomes for type 2 diabetics through better care. An overview of our target population today includes that the type 2 diabetic is they have a chronic condition that changes the way the body metabolizes glucose by resisting the insulin or not making enough insulin to control the glucose level in the blood. Demographics of type 2 diabetics include in 2010 it was an estimated 285 million people worldwide with diabetes 90% of those people had type 2 diabetes so that's a lot. Um, in the U.S., the breakdown by race includes 7.6% of whites, 9.0% Asians, 12.8% Hispanics, 13.2% Blacks, and 15.9% American Indians or Alaskan Natives. Type 2 diabetes comes with modifiable risk and non-modifiable risk. Some of the modifiable ones include obesity, lack of physical activity, smoking, diet, abnormal lipids, and hypertension. The non-modifiable risks would include age, sex, ethnicity, family history, history of gestational diabetes, and polycystic ovarian syndrome. Goals of care for this tar target population uh, we have a goal that patients should receive health care from a collaborative, integrated team with expertise in diabetic care. The goals of care should be customized with input from the patient and family, the primary care physician, and the rest of the health care team because we need to work together on this disease. A key goal for the type 2 diabetic patient is to have blood sugar control. Patients should be taught how to check their blood sugar and what the prescribed goal range is for their blood sugars. This is something that can be modified also by diet, exercise, and medication. Cardiovascular health is important for the type 2 diabetics because it is the major cause of morbidity and mortality in patients with type 2 diabetes. Controlling blood pressure, lipids, and smoking cessation while encouraging the patient to have an increase in physical activity can help with this. Nutrition. This is another key target for our population. Registered dietitians can work with these patients to promote healthy eating patterns with nutrient-dense foods, portion size control, and also to be able to achieve and maintain a healthy body weight or BMI. Medication compliance. Type 2 diabetics often require multiple medications to lower their blood sugar, reduce cardiac risk factors, and manage their comorbidities. Compliance with prescribed medications is critical to manage the disease and keep the comorbidities in check. Health promotion and risk de reduction with this population. Type 2 diabetics require many aspects of care to manage the disease, including blood sugar testing, healthy diet, physical activity, regular doctor visits, and medications to reduce potential risks of complications and comorbidities. Strategies for health behavior change include educating patients, setting goals, and reinforcing and promoting good behaviors. This target population requires lots of maintenance for their health, physical activity, having a healthy weight, foot care, 
eye care, and primary care visits with regular labs. Type 2 diabetes occurs when the pancreas does not produce enough insulin or the body becomes resistant to insulin. This imbalance occurs when genetic and environmental insults happen to the body, causing the derangement. Most type 2 diabetic patients do not need insulin to survive, but typically have a decline in their ability to produce insulin. So quite often these patients will eventually end up on insulin. Some of the key points to remember about this disease is that it's a slower onset than type 1 diabetes, so sometimes it's not picked up right away. Obesity contributes a lot. Increased adipokins, free fatty acids, triglycerides, cholesterol, cytokines, and interleukins all cause insulin resistance. This disease is progressive. As the need for insulin increases, the pancreas loses its ability to produce insulin. So like I said before, quite often these patients will eventually end up on insulin. So when we're diagnosing type 2 diabetes, one of the classic symptoms that you might see somebody come in to see you for would be increased thirst and urination. This happens due to increased blood sugar and then the water is pulled from the tissues causing intracellular dehydration, therefore causing the increased thirst and then the urination. Retinopathy is another associated symptom with type 2 diabetes. It causes small blood vessels of the retina to be damaged, which leads to retinopathy. Unfortunately, it is the leading cause of blindness in the U.S. Another presenting symptom that might happen for these patients before they're diagnosed is they might come in with a wound that just won't heal. Neuropathy, poor circulation, and increased blood sugar makes recognition of these wounds and the healing process quite challenging for these patients. Some of the critical labs and diagnostic findings for these patients would include uh, checking a fasting blood sugar or hemoglobin A1c. Those are kind of the main labs that are drawn to look for type 2 diabetes and to monitor it. A fasting blood glucose above 126 or an A1c above 5.7 can be indicative of type 2 diabetes. Other important tests to consider with these patients would be the urine albumin to creatinine ratio and the estimated glomerular filtration rate or GFR. And both of those are used to monitor kidney function because we have to worry about kidneys in this disease. Complete blood count or CBC that helps us monitor for infection because like we said, sometimes they end up with wounds that they're not aware of. And then electrocardiogram or EKG and then the lipid profile to monitor for coronary artery disease. We recommend that these patients have a dilated eye exam yearly to monitor for retinopathy. Treatments for type 2 diabetes include pharmacological treatments and also holistic treatments. Metformin is a first-line medication. It's oral, uh, low-risk, high efficacy, and quite often that's where we start with treating these patients, monotherapy. And then after three months, if we're still not getting an A1C control that we would like, uh, we can add a second-line drug like for example, glipizide. And then later, if we're still not getting that control with the A1C that we wanted to with the dual therapy, we can add a third line drug. So an example of that would be Actos. In that category, there's often some combination drugs. So it could be metformin combined with something else. So that would make it easier for medication compliance. Other things that need to be addressed with medication for the type 2 diabetic would be something for cholesterol, a statin, perhaps Lipitor, or something to keep blood pressure in the range that we would like it. And also we have to monitor these patients for depression. So if uh, you're finding that your patient is depressed, they might need an antidepressant. Some of the holistic therapeutics that we recommend for these patients would include massage, 
It helps increase circulation and also can lower blood pressure. Yoga is another example of a holistic therapeutic that would be beneficial for these patients. Helps lower blood sugar, blood pressure, and has coronary um, health benefits. And of course, again, exercise is one of the key things for these patients. It not only decreases weight, helps keep blood sugar at a good level, and also blood pressure. So some of the collaborative outcomes for health and wellness for these patients is that we need to treat these patients in a holistic approach because it can be very challenging. The multidisciplinary team needs to coordinate care and support patient behavior change. Some of our key points here would be patient-centered care. The patient needs to have buy-in to the treatment plan, otherwise is going to be unsuccessful. When the patient is not meeting the goals, we need to reassess and identify what the barriers are, not to scold or punish. We need to address the barriers. So income could be an issue. They might not be able to afford their medications. They might not understand the information that we're giving them. They could be suffering from depression or they could have competing priorities. This is where a case manager might come in handy through the clinic to help address some of these barriers. We need to help the patient promote self-care. So making sure that they understand how to check their blood sugar and what to do with those numbers once they get them. And then as a team, we need to communicate with each other. So at every level of care, there needs to be communication between the different disciplinaries. In conclusion, we have discussed the complexities of the type 2 diabetic patient and identified the need for coordinated care from the multidisciplinary team. Type 2 diabetes is a progressive disease, so promoting self-care, treatment compliance, and behavior changes is critical. Pharmacologic and holistic therapies are available to treat the disease and manage symptoms. Care coordination and communication is key by the multidisciplinary team at all levels of care. So that means inpatient, outpatient, or extended care facilities. Please don't forget to pick up one of the fast facts sheets. They're available on your way out. And right now we'll be able to address questions and answers from the audience if you have any. Here is a reference list in case uh, you need any more information. And again, thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming to hear about type 2 diabetes in the adult.